Hello, algebra students. Today we're going to continue to simplify radicals, but our problems will start by looking like radicals. They don't look like exponent problems, and hopefully you understand that exponents and, and radicals, square roots, cube roots, all are related to each other. What we're going to be seeing today is instead of just normal exponents, we're going to see fraction exponents. Rational, remember, that's just a word that means it can be written like a fraction. So we're going to see rational exponents. So for instance, in the first one, I've got x to the one-half power. This one-half power really means that I've got a square root. Typically, we don't see that 2 in that index spot, but you can. If you're using a calculator on a phone, for instance, when you turn it sideways, you get the scientific calculator. It usually has that 2 there. So if I have x to the one-third power, that really means that it's a cube root. So then what would you think? x to the one-fourth power means really that would be a fourth root of something. We haven't gone that far, and we won't this year. We're only worried about square roots and cube roots, but today's problems are going to start by looking like this, and we want to change it into those square roots and cube roots, the radical kind of problems, and then we'll be simplifying it from there. So again, you can see on the top it says convert each, each fraction or fractional exponent into a radical. And then we're going to simplify it just like we have been. So for instance, when I have 81 to the 1 half power, that really just means the square root of 81. I hope that you don't need a tree or anything for this. You certainly can make one, but you know the square root of 81 is going to be 9, right? In fact, if I did the tree, hopefully you would stop here instead of getting two pairs of threes. But right there is a pair. That's done. That answer is just 9. 256 also happens to be a perfect square. So this is just the square root. The 1 half means the square root of 256. The square root of 256 is 16 because 16 times 16 is 256. If you have something that's a perfect square, you can absolutely just get that. If you looked at 256 and had no idea if it was going to be a perfect square or not, um, you could start by just making a tree. And I would hope that instead of starting with 2, you would maybe start with 4, right? This is even. Let's try 4. 4 does work. 4 times 64. Well, the 4 can be a 2 and a 2. And the 64, oh, instead of breaking it down by 2s, Let's make that an 8 and an 8. So I've got a pair of 2s, they break out. A pair of 8s, they break out. And 2 times 8 is 16. Because remember I said 256 is a perfect square. 16 times 16 is 256. These are not perfect squares. 98 to the 1 half would be the square root of 98. Now, 98 is even. I know that doesn't divide evenly by 4. But it does divide by 2. This would be 2 times 49. And 49 is going to be 7 times 7, right? There's my pair. But 2 doesn't match up with anything. So 7 breaks out, and 2 is left. We stop with radical form. We don't go back into fraction exponents. We, we want these as simplified radicals. So 54 to the 1 half power would be the square root of 54. And some of you um, are probably feeling pretty comfortable with simplifying these radicals right now. So this would be 9 times 6. Here's a 3 and a 3 pair. 6 doesn't really help me because a 2 and a 3, there's no pairs there. So the 3s that I circled break out. The 2 times 3 would go right back to a 6 in my radical. A cube or a one third power is just a cube root. So this would be the cube root of eight. And again, hopefully you're pretty comfortable with this. Eight, we can even do a two, two, two. There's a triple two. There's nothing left over, right? So the cube root of eight is just two. 64 is actually also a perfect cube. You may not remember that one offhand. So you might want to start by taking your 64. And let's say, oh, that's an 8 and an 8. Once I have that, 
again, the fast way of breaking down the eight is like I did in the last problem. If you really want to do a two and a four and they split up the four, you can do that. I like to go two, two, two. There's a triple, circle it. Triple, circle it. So I have one pair or one set of twos that break out and then another set of twos that break out gives me four. And this works because four to the third power, four times four is 16. 16 times four is 64. The cube root of 64 is just four. 72 to the one third power, again, is a cube root of 72. Don't forget to put the three there. Don't think, oh, I'll remember it. If it's a one third power, you have to have the three in the index spot. 72, let's go with eight times nine. So eight is gonna be two times two times two, got it. The nine is a three and a three. Remember, this is a cube root. I need three of a kind to be able to break out. There's not enough threes to break out. So the two breaks out. The leftover stuff, these threes go back together to make a nine right there. 250 to the one third would be the cube root of 250. Nice easy way to split this up would be 25 times 10. So 25 is going to be 5 times 5. 10 is going to be 5 times 2, right? There's a triple 5. That breaks out. The leftover is the 2. So 5 times the cube root of 2 is my answer there. Sometimes we're going to get multiple fraction exponents in a problem. Now, as long as you're keeping track of what each part means, 4 to the 1 half power is just the square root of 4. 100 to the 1 half power is the square root of 100. These are both perfect squares. The square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 100 is 10. And we would still want to simplify our fractions. So that's just going to be one fifth. 27 to the 1 third is the cube root of 27. 144 to the 1 half, that's the square root of 144. Now notice I said in cube roots we have to have that little 3. Square roots, we don't usually write the 2. You can, but it's not necessary for a square root. If you see just a radical with no number in that index spot, everybody knows that means a square root. Now the cube root of 27. If you really need to show that work, feel free to. However, 27 is a perfect cube. This is going to be 3 times 9. 3 times 3, triple. So the top part of my fraction is just a 3. The square root of 144, hopefully you know that one. Again, that's a perfect square. That's going to be 12. So when I simplify that, I get 1 fourth. Sorry for the bell. When I have an entire fraction to the 1 third power, it just means that it's going to be a cube root of that whole fraction. Now, we can certainly split that into two separate ones if you want to. That could be the cube root of 1,000 and the cube root of 125. And again, feel free to show as much work as you need to. But I'm guessing that some of you are okay looking at that cube root of 1,000, and you know that's 10, because 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. So the top part is going to be 10. The cube root of 125 is really 5, because 5 times 5 is 25, times 5 again is 125. And 10 over 5 would just be 2. Now, we do have another option on this problem. If I had started by taking that fraction, 1,000, divided by 125, I would get that that stuff inside the parentheses is just 8. So the cube root of 8, we know that that's just equal to 2. So either way, I get the same answer. Sometimes one way is faster than the other. Sometimes it's about the same like this one was. For this problem, 18 and 162, neither of them are perfect squares. So I'm going to be taking a square root here. So in this case, I would say let's absolutely simplify this fraction. Uh, 162 and 18 should both be divisible by 9. 
Okay, actually I can go even farther than that, but that's okay, I'll start with that. If I divide them both by nine, I'll get a two over 18, and that's all to the one half power. Still not perfect squares. However, I'm not done simplifying. If I would divide them both by two, I would get one over nine. So that would be the square root of one ninth. Square root of one is one, square root of nine is three. On these last two problems. Now we've got multiple exponents on the same number. So you can certainly use your exponent rules and multiply those powers together. Or you could also take this in the first problem, for instance. The 36 to the one half power is just the square root. <laughs> I wrote a cube root. Is just the square root of 36. And the square root of 36 is just 6. However, 6 to the 4th power, I don't know that one in my head. 6 to the 4th power is really 1296. Now, if I had just multiplied these powers together, I would have 36 to the 2nd power. And 36 squared is 1296. I get the same answer either way. In this last problem, the cube root of or 125 to the third, one third power would be the cube root of 125. This one, I would not recommend multiplying those exponents because one third times two is going to be two thirds. We don't have a nice, easy way to get that answer. So let's do this one in parts, just like we did in the last one. The cube root of 125 squared. Cube root of 125, we've done a couple of times already. That's five. squared is 25 for my answer. Today's worksheet is simplifying rational exponents. The first step that you should take in every single problem is changing those into square roots or cube roots. And then after that, it's just like what we were doing before. The answer key is in Schoology. Um, Actually, I wrote that there was going to be a format of the Schoology, but I'm not sure if there is or not. So please check your Schoology folder to see if there is one there or not for you. And let me know if you need any help.